I have a video up dealing with the church of Laodicea. And it's, a, it's a response to a video that Bible of Traditions put up. And he thinks the church at Laodicea is the last church in uh, the state, different stages of church history. I showed in my video where he was wrong about this date setting, and that's what he's doing. He's date setting, just like Ellen White did, and showed him how wrong he was on trying to establish each church as representing a stage of church history. And I, again, I'll challenge him, you know, give me proof that there is a stages of church history. And if so, where do you get the dates? How do you go about establishing the dates? You're guessing on dates. You're guessing on the book of Revelations. If you weren't, you could give us some way on how you establish these different dates that you show for history. Now let me give you uh, a picture here of the dates that Bible or tradition uses for the various stages of church history. These are the dates that Bible or tradition uses when he is trying to set dates for various stages of church history that pertain to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. If you take a good look at his dates, you will see that he has overlapping dates for several of the churches, like the church at Ephesus and Smyrna. He has overlapping dates for them. Pergamus and Tithara, he has over, overlapping dates for them. Tithara and Sardis, he has overlapping dates for them. Now, Bible of Traditions, if these churches were to run consecutively at different stages of church history, why do you have overlapping dates for these? It seems like they would just follow in succession, and they wouldn't have any overlapping dates for them. Uh, maybe you can explain why if you believe this so strongly you have overlapping dates for these and maybe you can explain to people how you arrive at these dates to start with there's absolutely nothing in the Bible that gives you these dates how do you arrive at something like this maybe you can give us your method of how you're guessing to arrive at these dates especially if you think they're running consecutively why you have overlapping dates for them which brings me down to the last church there, which he says we're living in this last stage now of the church of Laodicea, which started in 1850, and it will run until Christ returns. I submit to you that Bible of Traditions has suggested that Christ was going to return in 2008, and that like Ellen White, he has gotten into the date-setting business the only difference is by knowing the mistakes Ellen White makes, or the mistakes Ellen White made, he can cover himself a little bit better. Now let me show you why I suggest that Bible of Traditions has, got it, has gotten into the date setting business of the return of Christ. He gets into this date setting business in a video up that he put up in 2008 called the Parable Barren Fig Tree Bible Lesson Jerusalem, Israel, and the Jews. <clears throat> he tries to make a connection between the Six Day War of 1967 with the parable of the barren fig tree that is found in Matthew 24 through 25 on the Olivet Discourse. And he says wrongly that 40 years is a set time for biblical prophecy, which is totally wrong to begin with. But anyway, by believing that 40 years is a set time for biblical prophecy, <coughs> he adds 40 years to 1967. And he comes out, it should have been 2007, but his video was put up in 2008. But in this video, Bible tradition warns us to look for signs in 2008 which would bring about the second coming of Christ. Date setting on the return of Christ. Clearly he said in that video look for signs in 2008 that would bring about the second coming of Christ. <clears throat> but unlike Ellen White, Bible tradition tries to cover himself just in case he makes a mistake. 
like Ellen White, he used the parable of the ten virgins in his video. But he made a he made his uh, cover up when he said, "But the bridegroom could be delayed." He didn't give any reason why it could be delayed. He just said it could be delayed. But in essence, he is date setting by suggesting that Christ is going to come back in 2008. Of course, 2008 is already come and gone. It's 2009 now and no return. So, but he has not given us any reason why there would be a delay though. It's nothing more than a cover up for his date setting. Just in case he failed, like Ellen White failed, then he could cover himself by saying, oh, you know, I really said that the bridegroom was going to be delayed. I'm sure he's out there with his crystal ball now trying to figure out why Jesus didn't come back and surely he'll make a video and tell us why the bridegroom uh, has been delayed. This brings out something that I've tried to let people know about for a year. The Bible being interpreted in the hands of a fanatic like Bible traditions is very dangerous. It does nothing to establish the return of Christ in this date setting. In fact, it is something that the Bible totally warns us against, is that date setting. And whether he wants to admit it or not, that's exactly what he did. He just tried to cover himself by saying the bridegroom could be delayed, but never gave any reason why it would be delayed. The Bible of tradition seems a little upset with me. You know why he seems upset with me? He's like a lot of members of the SDAAR. Bengali's done something that very few people have tried to do. Someone who 